God's beauty is all around us and my goal as an artist is to capture and interpret that beauty on canvas and to take you, the viewer, along with me on this painting journey. Hello and welcome to Painting Journeys. Once again we're here together and I last time I did a painting in our last show that was of coming home. And this is the, uh, what the painting, uh, what I worked from. It's a view from my living room window and it epitomizes everything about coming home to me, uh, especially during the holiday season. And then when we were uh, finished with the show, this is how far I had come with the painting. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty, pretty rough. There was quite a bit of finish work to do on the painting when I got home, but uh, to my home studio. But I, I did, and this is, the, this is the finished painting. And as you can see, I have uh, brightened up some areas and l made more branches and there's light on this tree here. And if you look carefully, you can see just a little bit of warmth on this tree. This tree is really more in front. And then as the tree turns, it becomes cooler, the snow. And then this flash of color, I put that on with my palette knife. And that was so exciting. That's so much fun. So this is what coming home uh, looks like to me. I'm very pleased with the way it turned out and I hope you like it too. Now today, I have a really special treat for you. We are going to take a journey to Ireland and we're going to be painting a castle. A castle that was probably built in the, uh, I would say probably the 13th or 14th century. Um, it originally belonged to the O'Donnell clan in Ireland and they had hundreds and hundreds of thousands of acres of, of land. Um, the castle, uh, the English came in in the 1600s and they took over the castle and they took over the lands and uh, the castle kind of went downhill from there. I guess it did have some owners, but anyway, some years ago, quite a few, a young man by the name of Sean Riley purchased the castle very reasonably. And he decided that he's going to restore the castle to its former glory. Well, uh, and if you look real close, you can see he lives there. And you can see a little bit of his living room there behind him. Um, he is really quite the character, Sean is. Um, and this is a, this is a picture of what the uh, more of the castle looks like. It's really very, very uh, dilapidated. You know, there's just a small portion of it that is livable where he's living, you know. So we went there one day and we had the most exciting time. Um, the Leap Castle is uh, it's located near the town of Burr, if you've ever been to Ireland, and that's at the base of the, um, the Sleeve Bloom Mountains. And uh, it was just the whole area. I could stand in the window up here and look out of that window and see for miles all this gorgeous Irish countryside, you know, with the little patches of the different colors of green and everything. They say that Ireland is, is, is like every green that you can imagine, you know, and it is, it is. Um, I guess that's why John Wayne actually went over there and, and uh, filmed a couple of his movies there. Anyway, so I think we better get started on this. Um, as you can see, I've done a rough sketch. Now, I can't get this whole, the, the whole photo 
into the painting. So I decided to eliminate and do what was the most important part to me. And to me, the most important part is this area right in here. And if you can look very carefully through here, this is actually an opening in this wall, this outer wall. And you can see inside this courtyard, this inside of here, there's actually trees. It's not a courtyard. It was, it's just the roof has come off of that area. And the trees have actually, there's actually trees growing right out of the rooms of these, of the castle. It's, it's, it's really something to see. Um, first of all, I'm going to take, and I'm going to wipe some of this charcoal off. I put the charcoal on and then I affixed it with some water so I would have my drawing there, but I want to wipe the excess off. Excuse the noise, it's, I just want to just see the drawing. There, okay, the basic shapes there, okay. I thought this was just so unique and I, I think I would really like to try working with my palette knife a lot on this one. It just kind of seems to me all this, um, the stone and everything would really lend itself to some palette knife work on it. So first of all, we'll get the, the palette. And uh, as always, I'm just working with a limited palette of, uh, of uh, a warm and warm down the one side and cool coming across the bottom colors. And uh, first of all, I think I'll go ahead and get that sky in there. That sky is such a gorgeous, gorgeous blue. Uh, let me mix up some, some blues here. And we have those clouds too that are very beautiful. The afternoon that we went to this gentleman's castle and he was there talking with us, he, um, when we walked into the main uh, room there, there was this huge table. It must have been at least 14, 16 feet long. And he had fixed us lunch and the food, it was an Irish stew, and it had lots of things in it that I couldn't recognize, if you know what I mean. It, but it was delicious. It was absolutely delicious. And he had made some homemade Irish soda bread. And I never did see the kitchen, so I don't know the conditions that this food was cooked in but I didn't ask either because I was hungry. Anyway, it was, it was marvelous. And we all sat around this great big long table. And he had this chair where he could just kind of sit there and watch us. Very quiet gentleman, very, very quiet. A little too bright. You see, when you want to um, make sure that you are in the right color family, or the right color temperature, you mix, and then you hold the knife up to what you're working from. You have to always keep in mind, of course, that it is a photograph, it is printer's ink that you're painting from, so you take the liberty of making whatever adjustments you feel are necessary. All right, I'm going to put the sky in with um, uh, my brush. And I do see right down in here, I do see a little bit where the cloud is right in here. And then I see cloud right up in this area here. Anyway, so there we all are sitting around this marvelous repast. And he's just sort of sitting there looking at us. And then we, we finished our meal and he came around to each one of us and he gave us a little tiny, um, I'm not sure what it was called, it was about the shape of a shot glass, 
but it was made out of ceramic. It looked very old fashioned, very, you know, hand, like hand, hand thrown on a kiln and very rough, very rough looking. And then he came around with this bottle and he gave us all like maybe, hmm, maybe a finger and a half of this liquid. Okay. Well, what that liquid was called is pochin. And pochin is Irish moonshine. This fellow makes Irish moonshine. And he serves it to his guests there at the castle. And I guess no one ever has turned him in for it because they all enjoy the moonshine, you know, or the pochin. So anyway, he served us that. Well, I'll tell you, just a little tiny bit of it went to my head immediately. And I was trying to find where the restroom was. And I asked, and he said, oh, just go up those stairs over there and you'll you'll see it it's like the third or fourth uh door on the on the uh the left well the stairs were circular okay and it was a little stone stairwell that was perhaps maybe a foot and a half wide very tiny i think people back in the um early times were smaller. And so this was really quite, quite small uh, little stairwell that I was going up in. I kept going around and around and all the doors that I would come to were real tiny, like this little arch here. They were real tiny and they only came up to about here on me, you know. And I would think to myself, oh, gosh, that can't be in the bathroom. I'll have to, you know, be all doubled over and crawl. I don't even know if I can fit through this little tiny door. And as we're going all the way up, and here's all these little um, um, doorways and little arches. So I get all the way to the top. I don't see the door that's supposed to be for the bathroom. I don't see it. Somehow or another, because my head was swimming from the pochin, I had missed that particular door. And so I get all the way to the top and I open this door and it was like opening a door into the inner sanctum. It was so dark and so empty and such a feeling of void that I felt like, I felt like I could just be, it was like a horror movie. I felt like I could just be sucked right into this room. Um, it was very, very frightening. And I got scared. And so I'm sitting down at the top of the stairs and I say in this real weak voice, could somebody come and help me? Because I thought I was lost, you know? And so he sent uh, a gentleman up that had been there before that knew where the bathroom was to show me. So it was, it was an experience. It was an experience. This is what I'm trying to get across to you. It was like nothing I had ever been to before. And, but he was so gracious. So anyway, then we came down. When I came back down from the bathroom, he pulled out his flute and he began to play his flute for us and it was just beautiful i mean it was it was so lulling and um uh just it, it was marvelous what he was doing with this flute um i love the irish flute anyway and he was a master at it so then after we were all done eating and we'd had our pochine and we're all sitting there kind of half dazed, um, he began to tell us his story about the castle and what he was trying to do with it. 
and he told us that you know we asked him, well, do you do you live here? Do you are you married? And he said, yes, I'm married, and I have a daughter, and um, she is a champion Irish dancer. She's won many many um, awards across. Uh, she's even danced in the United States and all over the world, and she's won many awards. But she and my wife. Um, is a retired Irish dancer. Now, I never knew this before, but it does make a lot of sense. Irish dancers are never very old because it damages their, their uh, muscles and their bones so much. The dance is so vigorous. And um, so at a certain point in their life, they have to just kind of give up on it. But... Um, his daughter. So he took us upstairs to his living quarters and the um, they had like an old cast iron bathtub and it was just, you know, it was like I don't know, there was no pretense. It was just like they had just stepped out of the bath and left their towels on the floor. I mean, there was absolutely no pretense. It was just marvelous to seeing what their life was really like. And he showed us his daughter's costumes, and they were glorious, you know. And then we got to explore a little on our own, and one of the things that I really liked the best was um, going to these windows. There were so many windows everywhere and you could climb up into these areas and you could look out the window and the window would frame this beautiful pastoral scene. That was a lot of fun. But that was that was a trip. That was a marvelous, marvelous trip. And in the weeks or in the shows to come, we're going to be seeing a little more of Ireland. I have so many stories to tell you about my journey over there that it was just, oh, it was so marvelous. Here, I'm just kind of softening that down because I want that to recede. And so if I soften it a little bit and make sure that all my strokes are going in a downward uh, motion, then uh, if I go across, the light will reflect on it, and it'll reflect up instead of looking like it's going down and behind. So I always kind of smooth the sky in a downward motion. That's why I'm doing that. There now. I kind of like that. The, the clouds could be a little, a little bit more pronounced. Uh, but I don't want to get into that too much because I'm going to get all hung up on this sky. And you're going to say, well, Kitty, when are you going to start that building, that castle? I do want to put a little bit more in here, though. Boy, this paint. Love that old, thick, juicy paint. It's just the best to work with. All right. There we go. All right, now... I do see a little bit of that blue sky right here. You see it? And there's a little touch right here where that's open and those trees are going through. And I believe that that would be, let's see, this window, this window, and that would be this window, right? And there's a little touch of blue sky in there. And then there's a little touch of blue sky that's coming like this and like this. Okay, and that looks like it's a little dark. And coming out a little bit too much. So we'll just come back in with a little bit of light and lighten that up just a little bit. And now then, I'm going to, I want to get a nice dark on here. So I'm going to mix up a nice dark. And I always put, like to put a little bit of alizarin crimson into my dark. I don't like to just make it black. Black is so flat looking and dead. I like to put a little alizarin crimson in the dark 
and it makes it gives it more life that way. And I'm going to yeah, I got the right brush. Okay, I'm just gonna come in here and get this little bit of dark in here. So that we can see what that looks like. Maybe I'll add a little bit more red to it. There we go. And then over here, we have some darks. We have some darks in this window here. You know, one of the things that really amazed me about this castle is that the, you could actually go to the window and sit on the window ledge because the castle walls were three feet, at least three feet wide. So there would be this big ledge, three feet of ledge that you could sit on, sit in the window and look out down below. It's amazing. There are all sorts of places where people could look out to make sure that, you know, the, the marauders were not coming to get them, but evidently that didn't work because the English did a pretty good job on the O'Donnells, on the O'Donnell clan. But. This gentleman had the cutest little car, a little European-like car. It was real, real tiny. He took off for a while while we were there, and I don't know if he went to the store or what, but anyway, out came this little tiny car that looked like a little, well, we have them now over here, little cars that look like their toys, our little electric cars. Not all of them look that way, but some of them do. His was very tiny. He worked. He worked in the pubs. He played music. Followed his daughter around with her dancing. Okay, we've got another window over here that we have where we have some dark. We'll go ahead and put that in. So now we can kind of see, okay, we've got the lightest light and the darkest dark on here. We can kind of see where we're going with this. All right, that window there, okay. All right, so now then, um, mm -hmm. okay, let me make up some paint here for the side of this. And this, I think I'm, for the time being, I'm just gonna put on with the knife and I'm not gonna worry about the detail of all the stones and everything because that's that's not that's finish work that's what happens when I take the painting back to my studio um, in my home and I work on it for now we're just going to try to get something on there that so we have a base there that looks pretty good Okay, so we hit right in here, we have a, a sharp, whoops, <laughs> a sharp corner right there. You see that right there? And that's because there's all kinds of plants and things coming in there. And there's a lot of plants and things coming up here. So I'm just gonna kinda put this on like this. Boy, I really have that thick, don't I? Wow. Oh, well. That's called impasto, when you paint really thick. And it's fun. It's like frosting a cake. Whoops. Okay. And we'll 
bring that on over here, around here, and then we're going to bring it up right there and over to here and up. You see this is I'm leaving because it's it's where my um, to show the depth of the wall there. come back in here you know I'll come back in with a little bit of gray and blue and put some you know different things on here to kind of make it look more like um, even just patting the knife on makes a, a nice uh, rock look But like I said, that's detail. I don't want to get into that right now too much. The <clears throat> people in Ireland are so friendly and um, it's just amazing how warm and friendly they are, how everybody has a story. And I'll tell you, they think nothing of coming up and smacking you right on the tuchus. They'll go walking by, and if they like the way they, that you look, well, they just might smack you on the tuchus. Uh, I found that a little difficult. <laughs> I had I was in a coffee shop with some girls and we were sitting there and this little gentleman oh maybe 10 inches shorter than I am came up and sat down he was older he was probably my age or whatever and <clears throat> came up and and he said you're a fair lassie. Can I buy you a drink? Of course, I can't t talk in an accent, but um, and when he opened his mouth to smile, his teeth were all gone, you know? <laughs> so anyway, it was just, I mean, I don't know. Maybe lots of the gals over there let him buy them drinks. I don't know. I didn't really want one. <laughs> but I don't think a girl would have much trouble getting a date over there. All right. Now I'm going to put this here, and I'm going to come back with the brush and come darken a little bit of this so that it looks like it's a little more in shadow. And even darker yet. Now this I have to be a little careful with, you know. I know there's little stones there and everything, but I can't really put those in just yet because that's detail. And right, so right now I'm just trying to you know, get my values laid on and the feel of the place. All that finished stuff will come later the next time you see it. And you'll have to be sure and catch the next show so that you can see how this turns out.
All right, now this is all green in here, so I am going to make it nice and dark. The, the darker green is a cooler green. Okay, what's in the center there is cooler. So I'm going to mask this in right in here with this darker green. And there again, as I was saying, all I'm doing is I'm going for shape, for the shape and value on the painting. Detail, detail and the actual um, finer points of the painting will be seen when you see it at our next show. It's completed. So this is, this is to represent this little bit of, of uh, greenery that we have in here. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm softening the edges, okay. We have a lot of dark right in here, very, very dark. I, in fact, I think I'm gonna just go right with the blue and put that in there because I want that to be really super dark so that when I put the lights on it, it's gonna show up really good. And so by putting this, that greenery, <coughs> excuse me, a frog in my throat here. That greenery is very, very dark. Let me see, before I do anything more on that green, I'm going to need to get some of the building behind it. Now this has kind of got an interesting, a very interesting shape. And I don't know if you remember at the beginning of the show when I, when I showed you the, the outside of, of part of the castle there, um, you could see the, uh, that archway from the, well there's many archways like that, but you could see that in the other photograph. Um, there we go. So I'm going to put that back there. And bring that down here. And there's, there's little, there's little, there again, there's little detail in that. Um, that we're not going to worry about now. We're going to go back to the knife. Mix a bunch more paint here. Let's see. And see, you know, what, another good, really good thing to do is to try to echo the color that you're working with into your painting all over. So I'm actually taking the sky color and mixing it into the orange to make kind of a gray. Um, and so I, therefore I'm keeping my colors very harmonious because I'm repeating color. And that's, if you want a nice harmonious painting, that's very important. I'm liking this. It it kind of looks like a little bit like mud, but then I think that's kind of what they put the castle together with, is mud. So, all right, I think I've already got a pretty good pile here. Okay, so we've got a little a little thing up there, and then it comes down here and it's coming across here. Woohoo! Look at all that color come out. Okay, and that goes up there. And then we have little things here that are almost like little turrets. You know, one of the things that was really so interesting about being in Ireland was all of the, you would go along and there would be 
just a, a, a round uh, lookout, and they would usually be higher on the hill, and the, these would be on the outskirts of the of the land of the castles, and and they would be there so that somebody could watch to make sure that they weren't being invaded, and they would they would watch from these little round turrets. I would imagine that many a person fell asleep to the detriment of the castle owner. Okay, that's a little darker back there because that's, you see that's going away. Now, I know in the photograph that it looks like it's really um, a, an extreme angle, but if I was standing here uh, looking at this castle, it would not be that extreme. Photography is very difficult to paint from versus painting from life because in photography, it dis the photography distorts the um, subject matter. So you have to know how that a distort, distortion is going to show up and make the, make the allowances for it. You don't, because if you just do it like what you're seeing in the photograph, it most likely is, is not going to be correct. And that's pretty important when you're painting from photographs. Being a, primarily a studio painter myself, I do a lot of work from photographs, and so I'm always watching out for those little traps that, that you know, show the world that, that you did not really see the place that you're just copying photographs. And that's something else you don't want to do is just copy. You want to create. This is your chance to create when you paint, and that's what you want to do. So if it doesn't look exactly like the photograph, that's good. You know, it really, if somebody comes up to you and says, oh, I love that. It looks just like a photograph. That's not really a compliment because all that means is that you've captured a, the look of a photograph. It doesn't mean that you've put your soul into it, your heart and your soul into the painting. by making little changes and putting parts of yourself into it. I know it looks really rugged and rough to you. I know that. I know you're probably at home scratching your head right now, thinking, gosh, does this girl even know what she's doing? But we will see. We will see. And now I'm going to come with a little green, and there's a little bit of green right in here that I'm going to put on there, a little bit of a plant, and I'm just going to pat it on kind of, and so that you can kind of get the idea of what that's going to look like when I'm done. Now I may scrape that off when I get it back to the to my home studio, but for now, I'll leave it on there just so that you can see. And I'll color up my little bit of sky hole that I left there. Okay. And I won't worry about that too much. That's okay. There we go. And I will take this and go across the top. And then it will be shaped a little better. And we're going to be in uh, in Ireland for uh, several, several shows now. Um, I have some 
marvelous experiences that I want to tell you about and, and places that I want to show you and very funny um, incidents that happened to me while I was there. There's nothing quite like being in another country and <laughs> you just kind of have to go with the flow and sometimes you don't really know what the flow is to go with so it can be a little a little intimidating at times. There we go, that looks a little better there. Okay, so now then, um, I'm seeing this is being a little bit yellower up here. I'm gonna add a little yellow to this side here because this is cooler. That's a cooler temperature because it's going away from us and it's in shadow. And this is kind of brighter, so we do have this little thing that comes up here, and then this comes across here, and it comes over to right about here, and then it comes up again, right there. And so this is in here. There's that corner. see here. Well, this looks like it has a little bit of pink in it. That's pretty. I hope I'm not copying the pin printer's ink. Okay. But why not though? It would be pretty against all that green. Why not take that liberty? Yeah. That's just a little bit wider right there and it comes right there like that. There we go. Isn't this fun? Yeah. I love it. I love to paint. I love it that <clears throat> I'm able to be here with, with you today as I share my, my journey with you to, to Ireland and to the other places that, that we'll be going in future shows. Great. There we go. Okay. And then this is just going to kind of come over here and um, you know, when I step back and I look at that, I think that's got a pretty good thing going. I'm pretty happy with it. Okay. Oh, this is more green over here. Um, and let's see. And I just got a signal from the cameraman that I'm running out of time. I'm so sorry. We don't have too long left to be together today. Will I get the whole thing with paint on it? I hope to. All right. Let's see now, this is kind of a green down here because this is plants in here coming up. So let's just kind of get that in there. This is dark right in here inside this window. There we go. There's so much greenery growing over this, it was just amazing. I mean, there was whole places that were missing and that were just all overgrown. And there's <clears throat> something in Ireland. It's a yellow plant and you see it everywhere. It's called gorse. And it just, as you're driving along and you see it along the countryside, it's beautiful. I, I mean, I thought it was just beautiful. It's, great big huge bushes of this of this uh, 
stuff called gorse, gorse, G-O-R-S-E. And I was just, I thought it was just beautiful. But the people that live there, they hate it because it's invasive and it takes their, over their, uh, their crops and they have to fight with it all the time. The sheep and the cattle are constantly battling, you know, for, for food because of this, these, the gorse. And the gorse is, is very um, um, thorny, so you can't even get near it. You know, it's very, very thorny, very, um, okay, let's make this go like this, and then down like this, and this is going to come out like this, And then it's going to be a little bit darker right in there, where that corner is. And then it's going to go like that. I'm going to lighten that up just a wee bit. OK, and then on top of this, is more green, right, that's coming up right in here. And that's that dark, that dark green again. It is coming all the way down in here. And then we have some of the yellow green too. We'll put some of that on there too. And underneath there, we have the, the yellow. There's a little yellow right there. And there's a little yellow right here. And coming over here. may have to fix that later. There we go. Not holding my knife straight enough. You probably think, oh my goodness, Kitty, stop mumbling. Mumbling to yourself, girl. I forget, I forget that I'm on camera. I'm just talking away here. Okay. Put this in here like so, and we'll have some of this behind. Okay, then we just have this little bit here. And I wonder if we can get this all covered with paint before the end of the show. Wouldn't it be lovely? I would be very happy with that if I could accomplish that for you. I hate to go back with a leave the show with just a partial um, painting. Mm, I love all those colors. Ooh, aren't they yummy when they come out? And then we're gonna have to have some dark in here for the window, the window ledge, and the window ledge here. That's going to have to be dark, too. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, I like that blue in there. See how pretty that made that? Let's put a little bit of that up here, too. Yeah. Oh, I like that. That's pretty. Yeah, <clears throat> try to straighten this up a little bit and try to straighten that one up a little bit. Now we'll come from the outside and we'll straighten this up right here and right here 
and then this is under. Alrighty. And I, oh, I just noticed, Kitty, those windows are going on a downward slant. So I have to fix that. There we go. Down. And, ooh, boy, I guess, you know, you really get the feeling of, or I do anyway, when I look at this, I really get the feeling of how I felt when I was there. It was like I had stepped back hundreds of years to medieval times. And what I, when I was on that dark stairwell, you know, was I going to be trapped in the castle? You know, I have an active imagination. But it was, it was kind of a wild, you know, wild experience. And I think the pochine had a lot to do with it. That pochine was something else. And burn, oh my gosh, the pochine, it burned like fire. But of course, I always did, I mean, I didn't complain. I asked for another one. But he poured the second one even lighter. Because he didn't, I, I think he realized I couldn't handle it too well if I couldn't find the bathroom. There we go. But see, in Ireland, you just have fun. You let your hair down and you just have fun and you do whatever you want. You know? Who's to know? But those crazy toothless Irishmen. <laughs> now that was mean, Kitty. Why'd you say that? Okay. So now then, we're going to take a little more green. And we're going to put right in here. And I'm just going to kind of splash it on because I want you to remember that we got all this green in here and and plants and all that business on there. And the only thing I haven't done is I haven't shown you those trees that are, are um, coming from the, well, these, these plants over here are brighter yellow green, right in there. I haven't shown you those trees that are growing right out of the middle of the room here. Okay, that's going to be just a little bit brighter. Okay. You know, I might not do too much to this. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of excited with the way it looks right now. You know, it's, it, it, to me it looks, it looks just, ooh, I just got the message. I have less than five minutes left, kids. Inga, and I wanted so badly to just show you those trees coming out of the top. Let me see if I can get those in real fast. Bear with me, they probably won't look the greatest, but at least we'll get an idea of what they look like. This tree is actually growing out of here. Okay. Bigger brush. So once again, we have been visiting Leap Castle at the foot of the Sleeve Bloom Mountains near the city of Burr, Ireland today. And it's the original home of the O'Donnell clan. And it's being refurbished and rebuilt by a gentleman named Sean Riley, who does a little flute playing and makes a little moonshine and just generally has a very nice life. 
There we go. So now we can see that the tree is growing out of there. I'll put more branches on it and everything. I just wanted, I wanted you to be able to see, you know, what that was going to look like. There we go. And I'll have to thin those down and everything. And there, that's darker. And that's a darker edge there. And that's darker right there. OK. What do you think? Huh? I think that it looks pretty darn good. And I think I am pretty happy with it. I'm just going to make a little bit more yellow green right in here so that you can see that these things are growing down. And there we go. There is a portion, a tiny portion of Leap Castle. I want to thank you so much for joining me today on Painting Journeys as we've journeyed across the canvas and, and you listen to my silly stories about my trip to Ireland. I appreciate it so much, and I do hope you'll catch us on our next show when you'll see this completed. Once again, this is Kitty Lynn Klish with Painting Journeys. Be sure and catch us next time. See you then. Bye-bye for now.